Time now for your forewarned weather. Good afternoon, Utah. Happy Thursday or happy Friday Eve. It's going to be a tale of two different states across the Beehive State today. If you're in southern Utah, you'll see a good amount of cloud coverage, but you'll be looking at fairly dry conditions once you get south of I-70. Moab, a really cool view with that increased cloud coverage, but it's actually pretty mild in Moab. Meanwhile, we make our way up into northernmost Utah, and this is what it looks like at Beaver Mountain, where that snow is coming down at a really good clip, and in fact, some of that snow is caked on the camera lens, and you can't see the entire picture. We have temperatures ranging anywhere from the 20s and portions of the Wasatch back to now the upper 30s in Logan, while we're currently sitting at 64 degrees in St. George. That cold front is now working its way through northern Utah, and we'll continue to see it make its way through the northern half of the state, eventually down to the I-15 and I-70 interchange as we go from late this afternoon into this evening. But we'll go ahead and zoom things in here for a better perspective. That main line of showers associated with the cold front is currently stretching from Cache County down through central Box Elder County and into northern Tooele County. This will continue to work its way down to the south Southeast, even though we have seen showers ahead of this front and in the mountains in the Wasatch, we have been talking about some pretty healthy snow with even more healthy snow on the way. Most of our valleys are going to see rain, but as that cold front moves through, there will be that chance we could see times of grapple and behind the front can not potentially rule out the chance of maybe seeing some snow, but in the mountains we will definitely see snow as we are currently seeing and we have winter weather advisories currently in place for the northern Wasatch Mountains that continues through six o'clock this evening for the southern Wasatch Mountains nine o'clock this evening and for the Wasatch Plateau that's going to continue through midnight tonight where in the northern Wasatch we could pick up five to ten inches just with this system alone today six to twelve for the southern Wasatch and we could see three to eight for the Wasatch Plateau and book cliffs and at times there will be potential to see snow rates in those areas at an inch plus per hour, which means some very heavy snow. This is a look at the front timing across the northern half of the state. So now through four o'clock kind of concentrated along and north of the I-80 corridor, then from two to six focusing more on Utah County. And then as we make our way through the heart of the afternoon into the early stretches of this evening, that's when that front will start to work its way down into the central portion of the state. Before the front moves through, daytime highs up north, mainly going to be in the 40s and 50s. And in some spots in northern Utah, like in Logan, we've already likely hit our daytime high while in central and southern Utah today. Daytime highs will mainly be in the 50s and 60s with St. George leading the way coming in in the 70s and then into tonight. It'll be turning chillier, much chillier compared to what we saw out there this morning. As we make our way down south, it's a high of 64 in Castledale, 66 in Green River. Then in southern Utah, it's 58 for Blanding, 51 for Bryce Canyon and we'll likely see a daytime high right around 60 degrees in Milford. Let's begin the future cast at one o'clock this afternoon, and so far the future cast has been underdoing it, but the main thing I want you to focus on is this cold front. Notice it moving from north to south as we move through the heart of the afternoon into Utah County by three o'clock, and we'll still likely see some pretty heavy showers behind, and there's also gonna be the potential for some rumbles of thunder. By seven o'clock this evening, moving closer to the I-70 corridor, and what this is gonna happen is that this front is more or less gonna stall out. So we could be looking at a good chance for showers across the central portion of the state, maybe a little bit south of I-70 through the overnight hours. Then this front starts to move back to the north, and that's going to lead to another unsettled day across the northern half of the state. Then ultimately, the system driving all this is going to start to move its way in our direction going into the Easter weekend. And by Saturday into Sunday, we're going to be looking at a good chance for showers across the state, mainly valley rain, mountain snow. It's not going to be one of those situations where we see nonstop wet weather 100% of the time. But at any point through the Easter weekend, no matter where you are across the state, there will be a chance that wet weather finds you. Now through Friday, when it comes to our future cast snow, most mountains in central and northern Utah could pick up between half a foot to a foot. Cottonwoods 10 to 20, mountain valleys trace to four, locally up to eight. Then our valleys and benches expecting mainly rain, but if we do see a chain changeover, minor accumulations can't be completely ruled out. So here's a look at the Easter weekend forecast. The Easter Bunny going across the screen, he might not be too happy about the weather as both Salt Lake City and St. George will have the chance for scattered showers. So if you have those Easter egg hunt plans already to be out Outside, have that contingent plan to move them inside just in case. And St. George will be around 70 degrees the next couple of days, then scattered showers through the weekend as those daytime highs ease down. But by the middle of next week, we should calm down and warm things up. Then on the Wasatch front, showers and thunderstorms mainly through this afternoon, isolated showers tomorrow, then a good chance for showers through the Easter weekend before we calm down and warm things up as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. And by Wednesday, should be back in the middle 60s on the Wasatch front. Brian, Jillian.